All right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, we're gonna talk about wheel balancing. What is it? How does it affect your vehicle? What can you do about it? And how to use one of these puppies, wheel balancer. And uh, it's all on today's episode, so stay tuned. All right, let's start really simple. So what is wheel balancing? What are we talking about? Well, when we have a wheel, which is a rim and a tire and a rotating assembly, whenever we have something rotating, we have something called centrifugal force that is pulling on the weight of the rim and the tire in an outward direction. And you get more force the faster this thing spins. Now in a perfect world, this rim and tire is manufactured absolutely perfect. So there's no heavy or light spot. However, that's just not the way these things work. You're always gonna have something like a valve stem which makes the rim a little bit heavy or a little bit low in certain areas. And this is where we have the out of balance issue. Now, when we have a wheel and tire that is not balanced, in other words, it's got a heavy spot on it or a heavy side to it, you're gonna have different centrifugal forces applying to different parts of the wheel. So for example, in this case, this wheel has a heavy spot here marked by just putting the black here. When this starts to spin at really, really fast speeds, the heavy side as it's coming towards the top is actually gonna have enough force to lift this tire off of the ground. And then as that heavy spot starts to go towards the ground again, it's gonna drive that wheel back into the ground and it's gonna make a bump and a vibration. And at really fast RPMs, a revolutions per minute, that this is hitting that concrete up and down, we are making vibrations that we can feel inside the car and um, we're doing damage to the tire because it's lifting off the ground and scuffing at the same exact spot. So you're gonna get something called cupping. So how do you know if you actually have a wheel out of balance? Well, the typical answer is vibrations. Now keep in mind, if you're only going 20, 30 K an hour, there's not enough centrifugal force acting on that out of balance wheel to actually give you any vibrations. But once you hit about 40, 50 kilometers an hour, um, you're gonna start feeling vibrations. Way more vibrations if it's a front wheel because your front wheel has your steering system and that vibration and shock comes up through into the steering wheel. So typical steering wheel shakes, dash shakes, sometimes a pedal and um, it is speed dependent. So if it comes and goes with speed or gets worse or less, then um, that's a good sign that you've got a wheel out of balance. Now, another weird thing that kind of happens with uh, tire balancing is you may have a vibration at 40, 50 K and actually goes away when you get to about 60, 65 K. And it's good up until about 80, 90 K, but then it comes back and the vibrations are way worse. And um, what I like to talk about that is it's kind of like the harmonics on a guitar. So you have a certain frequency making a note and when you count up 12 frets and you press on that fret and hit it again, it's the same note, just a different frequency. And um, sometimes that happens with wheels out of balance too. Now as for diagnosing a wheel out of balance, another way of doing it is actually seeing tire issues. So if you leave a wheel out of balance for too long, the constant lifting up off the ground and hammering back onto the ground at the same exact spot because that heavy spot hasn't moved, um, tends to wear out certain kind of divots or cups in the tread surface and um, that's called cupping. Now normally when I tell people how to diagnose wheel balance issues, uh, I just talk about the vibration, but I thought it'd be really cool if I did a live demo with that. So I've got a car up on the hoist here, uh, wheels are up off the ground and I've got a wheel that is balanced and I'm going to run that and give it some speed and there'll be a certain amount of vibration. Hopefully we can pick it up on the camera. And then what I'm planning on doing is adding a bunch of weight and showing how bad the vibration gets. All right, now I'm gonna put on some weights all on one side, make this super out of balance, and then we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> that should do it.
All right, and then here is a view from driving the car down the road with an unbalanced wheel. Hey, that was pretty cool. Uh, I'm not really sure how much the camera's gonna pick up. In person, this car is shaking, everything is shaking, and you can see how the steering wheel is shaking. Uh, really quite cool to see that in person but I kind of want to go one step further. So I'm going to double up the weight, put it on the other side of the rim and see if we can really get this thing going. Crazy, let's try it. show you with the extreme out of balance uh, go probably about 80k and um, honestly <laughs> I don't really want to go anymore I think I'm gonna really wreck the car so uh, here we go Tofu. All right, keep in mind, anytime you're putting a tire back on to a rim, you're gonna have to balance it. There's just no way around it. Something also to note is that when you're putting the tire on the rim, if there's a yellow or a red dot, that can help you kind of make a better matched and more balanced set, so it requires less weight on the balancer. So the yellow dot on the tire represents the lightest spot on that wheel, and generally that's gonna get lined up with your valve stem on your wheel rim, which is generally your heavy side of the rim. And the red dot on the tire represents that that is a side of the tire that is technically maybe a little bit out more and it's getting the most amount of centrifugal force when they put it on the machine at the tire factory. So that red dot, if you have a red dot on a brand new rim, they really should be lined up and um, that way they match up properly. But you can definitely use the yellow and the red dots to help try to get a better match set and less weight on the balancer. We have a very basic wheel balancing machine, but it does what we need it to and uh, lets us do static and dynamic balancing. Wait, what's this? Static? Dynamic? What is that? You know, static balancing gets its name from back in the day when you were balancing tires on an old bubble balancer and um, it's static. It's not moving. So you literally would just sit it on top of the machine and there would be a little bubble that you would put right in the center here and if this was perfectly balanced the bubble would be right in the center of the bullseye but if you had a heavy spot then it would tend to go like this and the bubble would move away and all you did is applied weights to the other side until you were able to get this thing balanced statically now traditionally static is also referring to just up and down movement on a wheel so if you were to spin the wheel and let it come to a stop you could mark this with a piece of chalk and then spin it again. And if it always seemed to stop on that chalk line, then that would let you know you had a heavy spot and you could attempt putting weight on the opposite side and repeating that spin process until it stopped at random parts. And then that would let you know that this is statically balanced. Now, static balance was good for cars back in the day, but now that just doesn't work with cars, especially with the wider wheels. So we have to move to something called dynamic balancing, and that's all done on computer balancers nowadays. So when we're talking about dynamic balancing, we're not only concerned about the static up and down, but we're also worried about the side-to-side -side different tolerances, and um, which is sometimes called, called a shimmy when it's not balanced this way. And um, so a dynamic wheel balancer nowadays can do both of those. Now, if you've got a vehicle that has that out of balance vibrations in the steering wheel condition going on, uh, it doesn't mean that all four wheels are out of balance. It could be only one. So if you're trying to figure out which one it is, go ahead and set up your machine and don't take these wheel weights off. Give it a spin, see if it actually comes up zero, zero. If it does, then this is a good balanced wheel. Move on to the next and figure out which one is bad. Otherwise, you're gonna be taking off any wheel weights on both sides of the rim before you spin it on the wheel balancer. To take these wheel weights off, you're gonna need a pair of wheel balancing pliers. Essentially, it's just a hammer to be able to pound these in, and it also has a little plier section. One jaw has got a point on it, 
that goes into the little hole in the metal tab of it and the other end just goes on the other side of the wheel weight and once you have it in there you grab it really hard and peel it up off the rim. Now the very first thing of setting up this machine is actually getting the wheel on the machine centered as much as possible. So we start with these cones here. There's a spring in here that allows this to go back and put some tension on it to center the wheel. But these cones are different for every wheel. So you just have to take them off and see if it fits your rim. So in this case, this one is just way too big. But this one, the step down from there, goes in and sits somewhere on that taper so we know we're going to center it. Now at this point, go ahead and put your wheel on but don't just throw it on or just drop it onto the spindle because there is sensitive components in this balancer that we don't want to damage. Okay, then you take your speed nut, spin it on. And on the last little tighten, I like to give it a little shake just to help it kind of make sure it's centered. Now, once I have this on, I always give it a little spin and I take a look up here to see if it's going like this and it's got a little bit of wheel hop. If you're seeing that, then that probably means you got the wrong cone or something's not sitting right and it's not centered. Another thing I like to do before I get started is I give it a little spin and I take a look for any rocks. If I find any rocks, I pop them out with a tool and that way that doesn't affect our wheel balance as soon as they fall off later on the car. Also, not a bad time to start looking for if there's any nail holes that you missed. Maybe you're switching summer to winter tires and putting on the other ones. And uh, maybe there was a nail that somebody forgot. And this is the time we could fix it and knock on a customer car. All right, very simple machine to use. The next thing we got to do is basically hit our mode recall and make sure that we are in the right spot. So generally we're going to be on dynamic. And if you have an aluminum wheel that's going to use the sticky tape weights, which we'll talk about in a bit, you may want to set it on alloy. Otherwise, steel wheels, you're up here on dynamic. All right, these are the things that we need to tell this tire balancer what's going on with the tire. So we'll start with the first one, A. It's got a little arrow and it's pointing to the edge of the rim. So we need to tell this tire balancer how far away from the balancer is that wheel. All right, so first thing is we've got this little arm here. We need to pull it out and this spot right here has to go into the flat side of the rim right here, like that. Now, once you've got this against the side of the rim and not the lip, but the side, you look along the scale here and whatever lines up the best with the edge of this black plastic. So in this case, we got four, five, and we got six. So we go A, six, and we don't want 0 0.6. We got to add a zero. That's that set. Okay, next up is W for width. There's little arrows here and it wants to know the width of this rim. So we got to take this caliper from the side of the machine here and you're going to put one end of this right against the flat spot of the rim on the one side and the other one along the other side on its flat spot. And wherever this arrow points is what number you're going to put in. So in this case, we've got six. So W, six, add a zero, or 6.0. And then the last thing we have to tell it is what is the actual diameter of the rim. And in this case, uh, we have to find these set of letters and numbers. And if you haven't watched the reading the tire information video, I highly recommend you do that. But uh, those of you that have, we know we're gonna jump to the number after the R and we've got 14. So this stands for a 14 inch diameter rim. So D, one, four, we don't want 1.4 inches. So we gotta add a zero. So 14 inches. So now this wheel balancer knows exactly what's on here and we're ready to spin it. All right, so not a bad idea. We're gonna get this thing started. So safety glasses and um, this machine won't even start and spin it up and balance it unless you have this hood closed. So close that. Now on this old machine, I like to give it a little help so it doesn't have to spin up a big truck tire without any weight. So I usually give it a big, big spin, close the hood and press start. That way it doesn't have to work so hard to get it going. We've got some super glitchy numbers going on here, but uh, you should be able to read them. We got 1.75 over here, that's the left side of the wheel, and we got a 0.75, which is the right side of the wheel. Now, what this refers to is the amount of weight, so in ounces, uh, where the balancer would like you to put the weight. So, what you do is you rotate the wheel, and if you'll notice, these little dots will start to move as I rotate the wheel. And 
where you want it, we're gonna start with this right hand side first, is you want it so that the dot is bouncing back and forth. That's saying put it right there. So we're gonna put 0.75 ounce weight. And when you look at the machine, there's a little diagram or a little drawing of a weight with an arrow. So once you have that red LED flashing back and forth, it wants this weight right along this axis, whether it's on the left or the right side. So for us, we gotta set it up on the right. Now every shop's gonna be a little different, but you start to have a collection of wheel weights. So in our shop, the right hand side and labeled is our steel wheel weights. And uh, those are general purpose. They kind of fit every single steel wheel out there. And then on the left, we have the most common uh, wheel weights that will fit on aluminum wheels. So um, aluminum wheels tend to have different rim profiles and will need different types of wheel weights. So um, for us, we uh, generally have the general ones and if they don't work, we hop to tape weights, which we'll talk about in a bit. So I'm gonna grab uh, a 75 ounce. So we got a 0.75 ounce weight uh, for the steel weight. So we're gonna put that on the right hand side. All right, so you grab your wheel balancing pliers. In this case, we're gonna use the hammer to hammer on our weight. And um, so with that LED flashing back and forth, we follow where that red arrow is and it wants the weight right here. So we're gonna center the weight like that, put it over the lip. I like to double check and make sure things have not moved. Put your hand or your finger on the side of it so that you can have room to hammer it. And um, you kind of have to hit it hard enough to expand out the tab on it. Give it a couple taps, make sure it's in place. Okay, that's one side, let's move to the other side. Okay, so this side's done, now we gotta do the 1.75, so we're gonna turn the wheel until we get that LED light flashing back and forth. Okay, got my 1.75 ounce weight. There's my arrow, it wants it right there, so I'm gonna center this on that spot. Fingers to the side. Good wrap. Now at this point we should be done so we're gonna give it a spin and see how it goes. Once you've spun it, if it comes up zero and zero, that's telling you that this wheel is now completely balanced out and you're good to go. Take it off and put it on the vehicle. Now, if you've got a nice set of $4,000 Lexani wheels and you don't want to stick these ugly wheel weights, there is another method and I'll show you that right now. But uh, we've got to knock off this center hub. Usually they just knock out. Don't forget to put them back on when you're done. Right now the setup is exactly the same, so I've gone ahead and done that, but we are gonna wanna press the mode recall button until it says alloys. And uh, this is a, a different method that we're gonna use the tape weights, which I'll talk about in a second. Give it a spin, close the hood, and press start. All right, in this case it wants 0.5 ounces on the left and half an ounce on the right. Now, because we don't wanna see these nasty weights on the outside of our brand new nice chrome wheels, we wanna kinda of hide them and hide them behind the spokes. And um, so what these are, are these are called tape weights is the actual name brand. Essentially, they're self-adhesive, they got little stickies, and they're weights. And you get them in different sizes, but I buy the ones that are in quarter ounce. So this is 0.25, this is 0.5 for two of those squares, and we want 0.5, so we're gonna bust them off, and all you do is you bend them back and forth until it breaks and tear it off and then you get your 0.5 ounce weight. Now because this is just a sticker, if I just peel this back and put it where it wants it, it's probably gonna fall off immediately. So the surface that you're gonna be putting it on needs to be clean. So get a wet rag, wet paper towel, wash the area off, and then get a dry rag or dry paper towel to dry off that, make sure there's no moisture, and that way this has a really good chance of sticking. Now if you've got a wheel rim that's pretty nasty and there's paint coming off, lots of oxidation, then you're gonna have to get um, some sandpaper and give it a little scuff as well as clean and dry before you put this on. And these have a tendency of coming off, so if you wanted to put a little bit of duct tape, I've even heard of some people super gluing them on, um, that's a possibility too. Now when you select the alloy method, instead of it wanting the weight on the side here, 
it actually kind of wants it on the underside right here. And um, what's good about that is as this wheel spins faster and faster, centrifugal force will actually keep it pinned against the rim rather than trying to peel it off the side and have it fall off. Okay, so I've got to rotate into the position where it wants it and there's my arrow, it wants it right here. So I'm gonna wash this area really well. Dry it really well. Peel the sticker back off. Make sure that you double check that you haven't moved the wheel. Put it right in line. And what I like to do is pull up on it. Make sure that it's really, really sitting right. And then move on to the other side. Now the other side of the wheel also wants 0.5, so another two of these, bust them off. Now on this side, you can see there's not really anywhere to put it. You don't want to put it outside. We don't want to see it. And ideally, we'd like to put it right behind one of these spokes so you don't see it. But um, I don't have a fancier wheel balancer that actually can figure out how to space the weight out based off of that. So we're just going to put it where it wants it. But we want to put it inset on the flat side as far out as we can, but as long as it's on the flat side of the rim. So once again, turn it so you get it pointing exactly where it wants it. And so it wants it right here. So reach back in, clean it up. Dry it off. Okay, peel the sticker back and put it up in place. Okay, give it a spin, close the hood, press start. All right, and there we have it. We spun it, there's our zero zero. So there's another wheel balanced and uh, using those taper weights. So there's a couple things that can happen when you're doing wheel balancing that give people grief. And one of them is you go to press start and you get H-O-O-D and there's your error code, hood. What happens is you still haven't put down the hood. It's a protection device. They want you to put it down and then it'll work. Another common error that you might get when using a wheel balancer is you get everything set up and you're ready to go and you press start and you get HUB. Uh, what that means is you have not tightened the wheel enough. So if you get that hub error, uh, you haven't tightened this up, make sure it's nice and tight and uh, before you start. Another really common thing that you might have happen is you've spun the wheel and you're in the middle of doing your wheel balancing. Maybe you're doing the left side and it's done. You go to do the right and the numbers are different all of a sudden or one's missing, something's happened. Um, in this machine in particular, if you take too long, more than a couple of minutes, it starts to cycle through some numbers, it might be like a screen savings kind of thing. And um, if that happens, all you have to do is press the mode recall button and go back to where you were, and then uh, you're gonna have your original numbers pop back up so you know where to put the weights. And every now and then you may get a vehicle where you have all the wheels balanced properly, they've all zeroed out, and you put it on the vehicle and you go for a rip, and yet you're still getting vibrations, very much speed dependent, and it's, it's screaming wheel balance. Well, what's going on here? Well, every now and then you can get a tire that's got a weird anomaly, kind of a defect inside, it's delaminated, and it, Balance is okay when you're spinning it up in the air all by itself, but as soon as you put it on a car and put weight on it, the way it rolls down on the road, it uh, is not balanced anymore. So if that's the case, you have to go to a specific wheel balancer called a road force balancer. And what that does is it has a wheel at the back that pushes about 2,000 pounds and simulates the weight of the vehicle on the road, and it balances it in that situation. So sometimes you need to do that. Mr. J, what about them there balancing beads? I don't got no stinking wheel weights on my truck. How does that work? Balancing beads, you don't see a lot of. Uh, if you do see them, they're usually on trucks uh, for a couple reasons. First reason is the tread is usually really aggressive, really deep on these all-terrain tires and uh, really easy to pick up a quarter ounce, half ounce rock just by hopping off the road and going onto a gravel road and uh, instantly your wheel is not balanced or boom, it comes out kilometer down the road and we're back out of balance. So you have to uh, have something that kind of can compensate as you go. And those are balancing beads. Now the other reason why you might see uh, balancing beads on a truck tire like this is if you're going off-roading, very easy to scuff the edge of the tire against a rock and just wipe off any kind of wheel weights that you have on there. But if you've got balancing beads, they're inside and uh, 
they don't go anywhere. So since it's hard to see exactly what's going on with balancing beads and how they work inside of a tire, what I have done is I have made a little rig here, just an electric drill, and I have drilled a hole through the top of a water bottle and I've glue gut it together on a drill bit so I can spin it. So we are going to treat this as a unbalanced wheel and so you'll see that when I spin it this thing kind of gets out of hand here. So if you watch in the end here you'll see it kind of and the faster I go you can see that's really wobbly and all over the place so much like a tire would be doing at high speed on your car. Now if we take this off and we fill it full of bouncing beads and in this case I wasn't going to go buy $30, $40 set of bouncing beads for a vehicle. I just went out and bought an $8 bottle of steel BBs that you use for BB guns. They're essentially the same thing. They're just round, they've got some weight to them and um, put it inside the bottle. Now you don't just throw a random amount, there is actually some calculation on how much you're supposed to put in depending on the size of the wheel, but um, for me, I played around with it, this works really good. So, these are inside the wheel now. And as this spins up, these are going to go and spread themselves out due to centrifugal force, and then uh, the faster I go, it'll smooth out, like this. And this is about three or four times faster than I was doing before. And you can see how nice and smooth that is. Pretty cool. All right, that was pretty cool, but it still doesn't explain how these balancing beads actually work. And uh, to do that, we got to go back to the tire here. So remember that this tire has a heavy spot, so it's out of balance. And when this thing goes super fast, there's enough centrifugal force that as it's coming to the top, it's actually pulling the wheel up. And when it does that, now that we have balancing beads in here, the, the balancing beads that are at the top actually kind of come away from the top surface as the tire goes up, and that lets more of the weight go to the bottom, and that balances it out. And this is constantly adjusting, and the beads inside are constantly going away from the tire or to the tire, and um, that's what's actually balancing the tire. Yes, another video down, and yet another step closer for you guys on how to become a gearhead. Um, hopefully you're getting something out of the series, and if you enjoyed this video or were able to get something out of it, you know, maybe help fix your car, I would appreciate a like and maybe even a comment down below. I'm, I'm really enjoying reading all the great comments I'm getting from you guys. And um, hey, maybe even a share on your social media. That'd be pretty awesome. That would make my day. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, put them down in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, take us a look at us at Way of the Wrench. Until next time, take it easy.